This is the big one. It seems ironic that I'm calling this my huge sketchbook tour because as you can see, it's like a teeny one that's the size of like my hand. Is that but A5? Wait till you see this when oh. you turn it on its side. <laughs> this thing has been pushed past like all its capabilities and it just wants to scream to be up and all it's the time. It's gone even further beyond and it is <laughs> as wide as it is tall. Now I do want to quickly say that this sketchbook I feel like is quite a, an emotionally significant one to me Ooh. because as you might know I have a tremor and there was a point towards like the beginning of this one where my tremor was getting really really like out of hand and yeah. it was before I had any kind of like medication or anything and you can really see in some of my line work that I was struggling to uh, keep control of the pencil and I've got lots of wobbly lines and stuff. I've still got like a, a wobbly quality to my artwork but I've definitely gained a lot more control so I'll show you that as we go through. That's the way you should see it as well, a wobbly quality. <laughs> Not a bad thing, it's a unique good thing. So the front cover we have got a little Posca pen snail that I doodled on. I love that, look at you. It's a baby. And then, the social yeah. media plug, I like that. <laughs> uh, I've got quite a few stickers in this one from friends, so this is from Bergie. I can't remember what friend sent me this because it was like 10 years ago that a friend oh, sent me wow. these puffy butterfly stickers but I'm glad I finally got a useful one and I believe it was Miss Solanum who sent me these stickers to Those our ones are really Amazon nice. wish list. Oh so this is the oldest sketch in the sketchbook so this is kind of before my tremor was uh, too noticeable. Don't die too <laughs> wear a helmet. <laughs> So this sketchbook, if you've seen that video, I will link it above. It was themed around Y2K. It came with like a bunch of like fun fact stickers. I loved the stickers, yeah. And that sort of turned into a recurring theme throughout the sketchbook. It was 2019, I believe, that I drew this. And then the sketchbook got put aside for like a couple of years. And then I came Literally. back to it. Literally. Yeah. 2021. This is a sticker from my friend Shadoff. My friend Punk sent me this. This is a, a red bubble sticker I've got on the back and then some washi tapes. Here is also this um, swatch fleece that we've got down here. This, this is, is a from... red bubble original from our Doodle Date Red Bubble store as well. It is. I'll have to show you like a red bubble haul at some point because I've got tons of stuff from there now and it's so exciting seeing your own artwork on things. Mm. In our Patreon Discord, I was stuck for like what to draw and everyone was suggesting like things. So we had like a poop with a fist, 10 tadpoles, favourite socks, chickens. This is uh, Samaya freaking out about what she should draw. <laughs> the date you did 2012. <laughs> I know, isn't that something? <laughs> move along. Oh, a few of these are kind of like out of order. That's fine. Hey, yeah, okay. I think it happened because at first I was only drawing on one side of the paper and then I was thinking, oh, there's some like spare paper. So I went back over, but this was uh, some of the medication that I was like prescribed. And I've got it this. made you feel a bit act. <laughs> well, yeah, the possible side effects. As you can see, these are listed as rare and oh boy, did I get some of the rare side effects, which that could be a whole thing in itself. I was having some really strange hallucinations. Never really been someone to hallucinate before. Wasn't even sure if hallucinations were a real thing. Can confirm those are definitely a thing. If you're on the right medication for it, you're going to trip and see some. <laughs> Congratulations, you have hallucinations. Maybe one day I can draw my hallucinations for you oh guys. <laughs> Here's a bunch of doodles. Oh, there's Bobo. Oh, this was with the Jazza box that he sent to us. Mm -hmm. and I was very impressed with them, yeah. I was really struggling with my line quality here. It was like a brush pen. I bet if you're getting really close, you'll be able to see like that was how the, wiggly. Yes, it was. It was at the start of the year, wasn't it? Of yeah, this year. I'm pretty sure that was pre-medication as well. Oh, this one I really struggled with as well. I did this in a Doodles and Tea episode, mm -hmm. which is a series on our channel where we just sit down and we have a little doodle together and, and we a catch chat. Out. It's sweet. I remember I was getting so upset with like my line work that I came to it afterwards and I tried to like neaten it up and I didn't really like how it was coming out. So what I ended up doing was I came back with like a bunch of like washi tape and stickers because I was like I feel like I'm letting myself down with my drawing abilities recently so I'll try and have fun with my creativity in other ways that I have more control so that's how stickers and washi tapes 
sort of became like such a prevalent theme in the sketchbook. Oh, okay. This was also a video on the channel. Oh, I'd, I'd ordered um, some kind of like Japanese art supplies online and this was like a little origami piece of paper that they'd sent, so. It's very pretty. Yeah, it seemed yeah. a shame just to chuck it out, so I stuck it in my sketchbook and then I thought it made like a cute background to put um, my French Shadow sticker on top oh, of it. Money. And then over here, we've got an Animal Crossing doodle that I did. I remember I was really upset with how this one came out as well. Oh, didn't you like the monkey? It was just one of those things where I felt like if my hand wasn't wibbling and wobbling all over the place, I would have been able to do something a bit better. And I was cutting out things off the back of like envelopes as well. So that's why it says handle with care, do not bend. And then I've put, got some different little stickers. I put a butterfly up here and my friend Silver sent me a bunch of stickers that she'd made. And this is Flick from Animal Crossing, so I thought it was fit. Oh my god, I'm glad you remembered his name. I just remembered him as Bug Lizard. <laughs> Bug Lizard. Oh, uh, me uh, sampling a bunch of like my washi tapes here. And this is a sticker from my friend Teresa. Those are from Tiger, those washi tapes, aren't they? Some Posca pencil swatches. I love those Posca pencils. Creamy as, and so pigmented. Look how great the colours yeah, are. Yeah, this past year, I've definitely been getting more into coloured pencils than what I ever previously have been. And so far, nothing has topped Posca pencils, but Oof. stay tuned. I'll let you know if anything happens. Oh, we've got some party tigers here. Oh, that's a great looking cake. Yeah, oh, the Amazon again. Basics. Yeah, those are pretty good as well. A video on I was channel. pretty dang impressed with the colours on those, and they're so cheap. They said that they were felt tips. I think they're more like fine liners, but a ton of Americans commented and said that felt tips and fine liners are used like interchangeably as words where those they are. Those zany Americans. Wild. Oh, this was another doodles and tea. Oh, the green tea ink, yeah. Yeah, because it's like scented, like yes. green tea. A very nice ink. Scented inks, guys, there needs to be more of those. I feel like Steph and I have tried nearly every scented ink there is. So if you know of any more, let us know. The brand that we got this from, they've got a few other scented ones, but they're never in stock whenever I check. Oh! But they've got one that's like blueberry and I really want to smell that. Oh, another doodles and tea. So it was based on candles. These were like the themes and I had to combine it into like one character. And then over on this side, from when I was supporting my friend on Patreon, she'd always draw cute little doodles on the front of them. So this is Joy San's artwork. And, and that was on the envelope. Right? Yeah, and it felt a shame just to chuck those away. So I cut them out and stuck them and put them inside like my sketchbook. It's Can we just talk about how grandma core your creation is on the right? <laughs> It's very grandma cotton. <laughs> she likes knitting. <laughs> She's also a coconut. <laughs> oh, this is like a wholesome friendship memory. So I bought my friend from their Amazon wish list a spirograph because I remember having happy times with spirographs as a kid. And mm -hmm. it came with like a set of like three or four. And then they sent me one of the spare ones in the mail all the way from like America so that I could play with it, so I did some spirographs in oh, here. It. It's like a flower and stuff, that's adorable. I tried to turn them into like little candies. and It was a lot harder than what I remembered, no. Um, I remember I made a lot of ugly spirograph creations as a kid, and I'm fully aware of why those things are a lot more difficult <laughs> to control than expected. <laughs> this was just a piece of like packaging from something that a friend had sent, so I just ripped it off, stuck it in. Stole some remnants of their uh, washi tape there and another one of the doodles. I love how mixed media this is, like, already. I really, really like it. We've got this frog that was drawn with the Posca pencils. And you used your burnishing technique. <laughs> it was, it was the burnishing technique. And then over here, uh, shed of stickers. And then I've got washi tapes from the flying tiger. And then another thing that I cut out oh, from- Oh, like an airmail. From stand. mail. Yeah, I just thought that That's was cute. cute. Yeah. <laughs> what? So, this is a little pretzel and over here um, I put that on just because I thought it matched the vibe it's got like the black and white and... What does that link to? Well it did say at the time it gives you a virtual tour of a zoo but a couple of months ago I tried to scan it to see if I could have a virtual zoo tour and apparently that's from like so many years ago that it doesn't lead anywhere anymore. Oh that's so. tragic, I would love a virtual I know, zoo I know, I was tour. hoping you could get a free zoo tour out of that but I don't think it leads anywhere Sorry, anymore. Guys. Oh this is a cute one. Oh this was from when I opened a ton of cutie tours on the channel. Mm -hmm. These are a bunch of stamps that I've cut off from a friend's mail. 
This was when I bought some stickers. Um, the person put a sticker on the front of the envelope and I didn't want to waste it, I so I glued so it in. Cute. This sticker it was one of those ones where it's got like a, a fun fact on it and it came in some kind of like a snack pack or something. <laughs> then over here. Oh, I was playing with, um, I've got a bicolour pencil. It's red and blue on opposite ends. Oh, is that the Karen so, Dash? Yeah, Karen Dash one. And then I think I outlined it in a blue fine liner from those Amazon felt tips. It's a pretty cool, but it's rare that people draw characters from behind as well. I thought you did a really oh, good job you. with that. I thought it'd be fun to experiment with something with like um, an undercut. Yeah, yeah, it looks really good. And then over here, this was like a fairly newish washi tape that I'd got at the time. And this was like a really cute sticker that Adam had got a long time ago that you forgot about. <laughs> And now I can't have ever. <laughs> but though, to be fair, I don't use stickers very often. Steph is the sticker queen. Oh, over here, we've got some idea <gasps> generation. It's man picks. Yeah, this was a Pokemon video on the channel. And I've went over with uh, those little letter stamps. I was having so much fun with those. I got so attached to man picks. I think <laughs> he's adorable. I quite like Eel Dog still. I feel like he's. Well, uh, his, his name needs tender. some work. <laughs> you know, Eel Dog. Oh, this oh. was one that I neatened up from a uh, Doodles and Tea. Oh, I love so. Dogs with Jobs. Dogs with Jobs. That's quite like a famed series on the channel. This one is a little makeup artist. Oh, she's so cute. Oh, and over here, someone had sent us a bunch of Crayola crayons. I yeah, don't think we yeah. got a name of who they are, but I was testing a bunch of them and I drew my Grundo from childhood, <laughs> which is a Neopet. Oh, it's Grundo and Neo. Oh, wow. No way. Did you guys play Neopets back in the day? Then I've put down some black tissue paper that I cut out from some friend's mail and then I cut out like some silver packaging and post-it notes and all kinds of things to make like a little spacey. Like one thing that's hard to translate is like this sketchbook in real life is so textury. There's like, like when you feel the pages and stuff, every page yeah, feels yeah. different. It's got kind of like a rough texture. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. But I, I like sensory things. It's the era of fidget toys and I feel like this uh, sketchbook has that vibe. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Some stamps that were on a friend's letter that they'd sent to me and I had to go out doing like my own version of like these stamps. Oh that's a cool challenge. I like that like redrawing the stamps. That's pretty cool. And then I had two stickers that look like stamps. One's got Where's Wally? Because in Whoa. the UK we call him Wally, not Waldo. Wally. And over here <gasps> I was doing some paper cutting. So this it was the spirograph that my friend sent me. I did a cute little one and tried to turn it into a candy. Got some stickers from my friend Shade off there. Are those spirograph eggs? What do you mean, eggs? At the top. They look like eggs. No, this isn't meant to be the pink, like, template thing, and it's also got, like, a bunch of shapes. Oh. <laughs> you, you know like, the grind. yellow bits? They look like yolks. They look no, like hard-boiled eggs. The yellow and the green thing's meant to be the thing that you put the pen in and you go around with. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they just got eggs on the mind. Then over on this side, I have the letter from my friend Tyler, who was the one who sent me the oh, spirograph. Look, look at that. I love how it folds out. That's incredible. <laughs> I needed to keep hold of this because it made me so happy. He showed me all the cool things that you can do with a spirograph. So it says, Dear Steph, happy spirographing. That science symbol thing. A donut. A Ritz cracker. That one really made me laugh because he'd just drawn around the edge of the stencil without actually doing the spirograph. Oh, that's all you need. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. <laughs> that's such a special letter. What about you guys? Do you guys like to keep handwritten mail? It seems to be more of a rare and rare thing these days, doesn't it? When you actually handwrite a letter and send it to somebody. And then over here, this is when I started experimenting with like some pop-out techniques. Oh yeah, so it's like 3D. Yeah, let me see if I can show you this from the side. See? And in certain light he casts a shadow and I think that's really cool as I've, well. I've done this technique better on some other pages, which I'll hopefully be able to show you. But yeah, he, he kind of like sticks out from the page that's cute. there. And then I've got um, a post-it note that I'd drawn like a few years ago and found, so I glued it in. Then around here it was Easter time, so I had glued in some chocolate coins. <laughs> no, no, you'd glued in the wrapper, she'd eaten the chocolate coins. I put a lot of sellotape over this because it's like very sharp and I didn't want to accidentally Ooh. cut myself on it. And I got a few 
stickers the like, same day story. I do like the chickadees, they're very cute. And I'd coloured this in with some pastel or coloured pencils, but I can't remember which brand specifically it was that oh. I used for this, because it was such a long time ago now that I drew it. But yeah, I was using pastel colours for that. Oh, over here I was making some paper dolls. Does anyone remember those from childhood? Where you cut them out and it makes like a little string of them all holding hands. And I found some of Adam's old origami paper, which I use for like the background. And then I thought it'd be fun to try and customise each little doll so they look like a unique little person. That's a, that's such a cool spread. That's one of, that's one of my favourite ones in the entire sketchbook. Aww. I just think that looks really pretty. I was using a lot of like tape at the time because I didn't know where my glue stick was, but later on it gets less tapey because of I've, I've I don't know, I feel stick. like I feel like when it has a lot of tape, it has its own charm to it. Like, it gives me that, like, uh, scrapbook vibe. Well, my uh, Rimsy series had a lot of tape everywhere. It did. Oh and my god. <laughs> the tape started to sort of yellow with age, so I try and, like, glue things in when I can help it. This was me drawing without any pencil sketches, just with some nice colours that I had. Over here is a marker comparison of when we did a hoo-hoo versus Artex markers. That one's been a fairly popular video on the channel. Oh, this is a video that not many people have actually seen on the channel. So I was uh, flexing some of my scrapbooking play techniques <laughs> in a video. Oh, I love that. Look at it. This was using, what do you call it, the Fall Memo printer. Mm -hmm. And it's a little receipt printer. People were wanting to know how this is like holding up because we did this, I don't know, maybe like six months ago or something because it will fade in like direct sunlight, but because it's in like a closed sketchbook all the time, it's it it should last fine. for a very, very long time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a capybara. We were drawing capybaras. I love that video, capybaras with Pasca pens. I really enjoyed that. This was a stamp that I cut out from some mail from a friend because I thought that that just looked so pretty. And then over on here, this was a Hoo Hoo vs Artex brush markers. And I've also been having a lot of fun trying to like coordinate stickers to match like my sketches. I think that's well cute. Over on this page. So I called this one Star Fruits. So these are sort of like the classic Star Fruits that I've always sort of known of, but. In recent years, I've discovered about a thing called like a star apple, and I was just so amazed by that name and the concept it of this like fruit. A, it sounds like a fantasy fruit. Yeah, it's it's not <laughs> something that is readily available or that I've ever seen in the UK. But I was doing a lot of research on them, and they look really interesting. So if you've got those in your country, tell me what the tastes like. I want to know more mm. information about star apples. Oh, this was an interesting experiment. So this is me using Posca pens because this is marker paper and it just hates any kind of like paint basically. So I put down some layers of gesso on this side and then this was it just straight on the paper on this one. Mm -hmm. And the one with the gesso, it handled Posca's so much better. Like you might be able to tell just from this that the colours look a bit more vibrant on the one with the gesso. Yeah, yeah. But not only that, um, the reason I've got one, two, three, four is that I put down like two layers and then three layers and then four layers and they all look basically the same on the one with the gesso. But the one without the gesso, when you start getting to like three and four layers, it's oh. really starting to tear up the paper there. It's starting to get a bit crusty the more we do. Oh no. And yeah, you can see that it's chewed up the paper quite a bit. So if you've ever got some paper that doesn't like paints, it might be worth giving a try with gesso, at least for like paint markers or acrylics. Just something that's a bit more goopy and more likely to chew up the paper. Yeah, but it wouldn't work for watercolour that definitely needs separate Oh god, paper. no! Oh, this is an exciting part of my uh, art adventure. So this was a prompt for the month called Steph Temba. Ooh! It's been like a thing that's popped up like a few years in the past that people have done for a joke and sometimes people make like little prompt lists and there's usually like one or two people who'll actually go through with doing the whole thing. I wasn't actually intending on doing the whole thing, but I just got so into it probably because the prompts were all based around things that I like. <laughs> so the first day, the theme was swatches. Day two, I'm guessing that was probably mushroom and I'd stuck on like some tissue paper to make it a bit sensory. These are like different fabrics that I've glued on top, so that feels quite nice. 
then my leftover tissue bits have like stuck to the bottom with tape and I'd had a QT tour which is, is like some holographic stuff yeah there? the QT tour um it came in a holographic foil stuff so Whoa. I cut that out and made some like little raindrops I really love like upcycling any kind of packaging that I get hold of. Oh yeah, if if you ever send a package or whatever, Steph will butcher the package. <laughs> Nothing is spared. Everything is used up, and I kind of admire that. That's it's very creative. It's fun trying to get use out of everything. Yeah, yeah. And then over on this one, I think the prompt was tea. And yeah, yeah. I've invented my own cereal tea, so it's got like those little. American colourful marshmallows. There's quite a few different things going on with these stickers. The Some of them are like holographic, some are like metallic-y and shiny. This was like a stamp from the stamping set and I've yeah. got a little heart around it. Then on this side we've got the Terracopos and I've realised that um, I could have just called it Terra Octopus. <laughs> I really <laughs> went an extra mile there to make something that's impossible to pronounce. But he's cute. You gotta give him that. Over on here, I think this was post-it knot. So this is a post-it knot and I'd doodled a little snaily bug. So he's like a snail and a ladybug cross. Oh. And I've got another post-it knot that I've stuck on top of it and some shiny stickers. I was going to say like he's shimmering a little bit there, that's quite cute. And over here this was a collar name character, so I got Adam to pick a marker for me. Just at random, and yeah. He's very attracted to blues because he's colorblind and that's like one of the colors that he's very... <laughs> because I'm colorblind, blue happens to be my favorite color. <laughs> he's colorblind, he's gonna pick blue. It had like a nice name because it's called Sky, so yeah. I tried to create a girl out of clouds. Oh, I love this one. I'm trying to remember what the name of this prompt was. But I love what you did with the flowers. Yeah, what I did with... I tried to make it sort of like a fidget toy so that you can uh, move the... Like the petals. Isn't that such a cute outwards. idea? And then you can move it like inwards. I've never seen like something like that. I think that's well good. If someone could turn that into like a toy with, where the... Uh, <laughs> The petals are quite like uh, wispy, like thin. I think that would be quite popular. But this is entirely washi tapes. I've got my Mr. Men and Little Miss washi tape that I'm flexing here. Love that. Got that in a paper chase haul recently. This is all made of post-it knots and then I've used gel pens. Then over on this one, um, the idea is like cute, but it doesn't work as well. I'd have to do it again at some point to properly like achieve the effect I was trying to. But the idea is is that it's like um, a plastic thing of candy. So I'd got some plastic packaging and I used that to put on top. And then I've cut out these little post-it knot candies underneath. And where I feel like I've messed up is that I put like a paper towel in the background and coloured in these pink stripes. Yes, yeah, so I can it, see. Aesthetically, it looks like a cute little packet of candy. Yeah, it does, yeah, yeah. But the idea was it was supposed to be like a, a shaker thing, and it's really difficult to get like these candies to uh, oh, to move shake around. around. Oh, and it's okay. because of the paper towel, it's like gripping onto it in the background before I'd put that in. They did like shake around more freely, but you get the idea of what the, the vibe was for it. Oh, that's such a cool idea, just as it is though. I mean, that, that looks great. I've got Ooh. Miss Glitter Crab. I'm glad that this is a video so I can show you how glittery Miss She's Glitter gorgeous. Crab is. She's <laughs> gorgeous. She is real shimmery. Fabulous. And she's got quite a few like beads on her. So her current hyper focus is bead collecting. I think I was thinking about Betty Spaghetti dolls at the time. Oh, so she's that's a throwback. Kind of inspired by that. Then on this one, it was like a doodle that I did, and the theme was cute hat. And I've got quite a few fabrics. <laughs> She's got so much glitter on this hat because of <laughs> Miss Glitter Crab. <laughs> She's just spreading the wealth, that's all. But here's some other swatches of um, ones that I almost used for the hats, the honorable hat mentions, but we ended up going with this one for the hat. I like that. I, I feel like it's cute. because it's got the blue and the white, it kind of matches with like the hair ties and the shirt. Then next page. Oh, we've got Frag. I've got um, another little pop-out detail here. Oh! I wonder if you can see from the side. It's there, it's yeah. There. And if you move this up, I've got a frog sticker underneath that Tara sent me for my birthday. Secret frog! I love that. And then 
You can tuck it in behind like this little bit of post-it not grass. <laughs> I love how your sketchbook's so interactive, like it has flip doors and sensory. Those things. were always my favourite books <laughs> when I was a kid, so that's kind of what I got. For. I love it. Oh, this one, the prompt was a typewriter. I thought like I could have a go at drawing like a typewriter, but that didn't seem as exciting as actually digging out the typewriter. So yeah. Adam restored it again for me, and then I wrote this little story over here, which feel free to read. I've also graded myself with a great work sticker and a tick. It's a bit biased. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, it was so fiddly then cutting out like all these little lines and trying to glue them all I in to so admit, it fit on one page. The finished result, it does look good. Next page, we've got a bug. Oh, with this one, I've stuck this piece of material down here because I thought it looked like the kind of material that a moth would be attracted to. Like it looks oh, like yeah. It looks like an old person's curtain that the he wants to curtains. eat. <laughs> Over on this one, I've drawn myself as a cereal fairy, which I've got a comic called Cereal Fairies. Very cute, by the way. I think this one might have been inspired by the washi tape, because this is like a breakfast. Yeah, it looks like it. Washi tape. It's framed really nice. Oh, this one's from my birthday. Oh, so this is um, a little pop-out doodle that I've done of the cake that my boyfriend got me for my birthday. Your little fondant fancy. This is a very special like bakery that I used to go to with my nana when she was alive and she's not around anymore so it meant a lot to me that you managed to get me a cake from there of all places. I haven't really been there since... Since she's passed away. Really. Yeah, not yeah, really. I've yeah. had a relative who once went and sent me something but it's like, very rare. Like the thing is with that is that it's a place that is very special to Steph and then sort of got sad because her nan passed away. So it'd be nice to try and make it happy again, kind of thing. That was what I wanted to try and do anyway. But this was a post-it note that came with like the cake face. That's the place, yeah. Um, down here I've got some colour swatches that I was working with. I've also got these donut washi tapes that one of our followers sent. I think they were called Amanda who sent that one. I'd have to double I think check so, that. Yeah. And this was the gift tag from Adam's present. It's guinea pigs, and I've wrote my birthday on it, and I've tied it in like a little bow. So it's like a, it little, looks like a little present. Isn't it sweet? And then I've also cut out a little candy shape here. Ooh. So it's got like a little pull tab on it, and I've got a sticker on that side. And on the other side, there's a bunch of the places where you can visit that cake shop if you ever yeah, find if you want yourself to check in it the out, area. Seriously, it's a great place. They make amazing things. Pop that back inside. Oh, you're gonna keep them safe. Oh, up next we've got oh. a peach milk. Oh. I like that sticker he's got his butt out. I was <laughs> <laughs> using some little fabric offcuts down there. And then I've got a bunch of little stickers, swatches. I think the theme might have been pastels for this one. It, it, I mean, it came out lovely. Then this one, the theme was Rimsies. If you don't know what Rimsies is, I've got a link to that. If you don't know what Rimsies, <laughs> where have you been? Oh my but god. I wanted to go hard with this one, so this is me in like an outfit that I actually used to wear when I was making the Rimsies as a kid, with a bunch of the art supplies that I used to literally use, such as my blue highlighter, my teeny tiny pair of scissors. I was usually eating a Rollo yogurt because <laughs> the back of the Rollo yogurts I used to use them for mirrors because you could cut them out in the like really reflective no, the looking. Younger lids. Oh <laughs> yeah. my god. And then I've actually recreated a bunch of the Rimsey's pages. Oh so god, got, look how tiny they are. I've even included the pictures of my guinea pigs at the front, the news, the mailbox, the opening page, and then over here we've got the teeny pet shop and the little dance skull. They're so outrageously tiny. I had a lot of fun with that one. That's very you. Oh, this one was a three colour challenge. Yes, see, well, I remember this one. So uh, I picked three Posca colour pens and then I did these little doodles. I wasn't feeling like too well that day, so I just ended up cutting out tons of post-it notes to create like a colourful background and put lots of stickers around. Ooh. Then this one, the theme was uh, stickers. So I went pretty intensively with washi tapes, then this one's a red bubble sticker of ours, 
This is a fairly newish Redbubble sticker, the little mushroom one oh, that I've that created. One. So yeah. make sure you check out our Redbubble if you want to see. There's so much new stuff but on there. I had so much fun like collaging a bunch of stickers on this one. I've put like little flowers around in my hair and stuff. You can see it like shimmering when it, when it catches the light. We've got little mushrooms growing out the top. It's a very you page, that one. <laughs> Ooh. Up next, we've got Froggy Cacti. I cannot remember what the prompt actually was for this one, but basically this was a plant that me and my boyfriend saw when we went to a botanical garden. Yeah. And I thought that they looked like little frogs, so I've drawn in speech bubbles what I kind of envisioned them looking like. I think the prompt was just marker, so I drew something in marker and I called it the Little Magic Flame Garden. And I imagined that it's like a witch's garden and her Plants are like little fires. That sounds like such a wholesome story. <laughs> I really like that one. Over here, this one was cozy, and I've got another one of those things that sticks up. Boys are right, springy boy. Well, I think it was you that said that I look like a fried egg in this, which I kind of appreciate well, that. I mean, that doesn't sound very nice when you say it like that. I meant it in the nicest way. Oh, and I'm really proud of this one because I'd received some sticker mail. The mail came with this this postage stamp and this sticker was on the front and I didn't want to just throw it out so I cut it out and I stuck it in and I found some green tissue paper and then I found some green fabric and I was like okay I want to try and make today's prompt based around these things so the prompt was just watercolour so I used watercolour and I combined it with uh, something to do with postage and then a vampire so he's like a little male prince <laughs> I love his angry little face. Oh, over here I was drawing a bunch of plushies that I'd been fortunately given for my birthday. Mm -hmm. Got a little sticker here. On this side, I've drawn a little comic and it was I'd found these doodle scents while I was uh, sorting out. Someone sent us these a really long time ago to the PO box mm -hmm. and I accidentally, when I was trying to sniff it, drew of all colours a brown moustache on myself. <laughs> Wasn't that called Barnyard or something? It smells like poop. Yeah, it smelled really gross. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite uh, Mr. Men character, Mr. Strong, because he loves eggs and I relate so strongly to that. <laughs> Over on this side, the theme was Miami, which if you didn't know, that's a very sort of niche within a niche, which is uh, my Rimsy series. It had its own trading card series and I wanted to try and imagine what it would be like if I made a DS game for it. So I made it as like a, a little snack universe. This is incredible. The amount of work that went into this page specifically is crazy. There we go. So the the DS game box opens like this <laughs> and inside we've got a teeny tiny little DS cartridge that you can Which actually comes out as well! Take Look the game <laughs> It's so extra, it doesn't need to be this extra but it does. I love that it is It's incredible It absolutely does need to be this extra That's so cool Feeling quite proud of this Again, one. that's one of my favourite pages in this as well Oh, this was a Doodle Dirt live stream. I think I've just like jazzed up the page a bit since. Yes, yeah, I remember but that But I picked like a bunch of prompts, like from a hat. Uh, these were who'd sent the art supplies. A big thank you to use. those. And I've stuck on like swatches and I just had a good time. I love that stream. If you haven't seen it, it is on the channel. It was a really chill one. I, I had, had really to write calm there because uh, the the con prompt was on the same thing that I'd done these doodles on and I wanted to stick these in so I could cut that out. <laughs> I found like some Halloween candy stickers to stick on the top of it. And it's like a candy corn snake. Like a skater snake That's or it. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then over here. This is one that's, um, you can get this one as a sticker on our red bubble. The sushi lady, it's very good. Yeah, this was inspired by the sushi washi tape. So this one sort of looks like rice and this one looks like the nori seaweed stuff. Mm -hmm. And I had fun trying to design a character and a bunch of things around that. And there's a little post-it note doodle. Is that a soy sauce fish? Yeah, it's one of those little <laughs> soy sauce fishes. 
Oh, I did this one in, was it to do with like, are you using your sketchbook the wrong way? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a fairly recent one. Although the little guy, he has he has a sad memory because Steph squeezed him too hard and, and popped him. Popped, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Squashy. <laughs> then over on this side, this is kind of something on the channel. It's a YouTube shot. I was uh, sketching out some ideas of what I could do for that shot. So oh, it was like that a one. drawing with Posca pens, but they're huge. Yeah, drawing with like a really thick marker. It's like this big or something. They're so satisfying. I love the huge Posca pens. Then I used the two colors that I used in the drawing here. Oh yeah. And I've drawn a huge Posca pen on top. That's pretty cool. Oh, on this one. This is from the Steffa Socks channel. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're following <laughs> over there if you're not already. Oh my god. I was designing my own tinned pea brand. <laughs> And Very then, niche co uh, <laughs> content over on the Steffa Socks channel. <laughs> then following up on the theme over here, I was inventing some more grocery store items. I really want to turn these into stickers. I'm loving grocery store oh, you themed sure? stickers. Those look great. We've got a little bag of apple slices, a drink called Fizzo, Fizzo. bubble soap, and a little 10% off sticker. A one ninety nine, and this little logo is uh, a new Rimsey's currency, which we've invented called Bitsies. <laughs> that was it. I love that. I love that they've got their own currency now, because everyone in Rimsey's has to pay taxes. So, <laughs> over on this one, it was a, a little like mixed media teapot that I'd made, and I had this great British washi tape, so I thought I'd get some use out of that. Got some little teacup stickers down here, and a milk. I believe the milk was from Cleo, so thank you Cleo yes, for that. Yes, yeah, thanks Cleo. This was me wanting to just sort of show off um, some gummy bear stickers that I'd recently got. They're on like a washi tape roll and I love them so much. These are the dates of how long this sketchbook was in use for, so from February 2019 to November 2022. And over here I've wrote the name of that Rimsey's currency so that I don't forget it. Um, I was keeping track of if there's any marker refills that I need and apparently oh, there's only useful. one that I need. Then this back little pocket of wrote pocket treasures <gasps> and I've got this adorable washi tape where it looks like a little town. I, look at that, that's one of your best washi tapes in my and opinion. Back here, I thought I might as well show you some of the stuff that's... You see hidden treasures? Of, yeah, my little treasure pocket. Oh, that one's falling out. These were from my friend Bergy. Uh, they're in the sketchbook as well. There were some little Sakura paper flowers. They're very sweet. She filled a, a card with them and I opened it and it went everywhere, burgling. <laughs> Oh, these were some little marker swatches from when I was drawing that little flame garden illustration. Ooh. Sometimes I just get attached to like little swatch sheets and I keep hold of them. As you can tell, I like swatches. I've made the swatch fleece. The swatch fleece thing, it, it's also available on pencil cases and backpacks. Oh, it's and... <laughs> on so many things, seriously. This was a little panda post-it note that I got and I doodled a little panda on it and then I got too attached to throw it away, so... <laughs> <laughs> you can stay. You can stay here. Oh, this is the sketch from the front of my journal that you can see Oh yeah, here. you thumbnailed it first, didn't you? Yeah, it's nice showing like the little works in progress things that I've got. <laughs> I've got another one of these little Sakura flowers. These are everywhere in the house. We're gonna we find these them. forever. <laughs> this was a gift from my friend Tyler. Um, it had this on the screen because it was, I don't know what I call it, it's like a little computer thing, but it came with this stuck over the screen because there's a little pixel art computer. And I thought I might be able to use that in an artwork at some point. You could like design your own arcade machine. Yeah, that could, that be, could be cute. Then over here, this is when I was trying to design my own logo for the currency of the Rimsies. Bitsies. The Bitsies. Oh. Oh, this was something that was in my sketchbook and I ripped it out. Let me show you where this was originally and what happened. So down here or something? No, it might have been up here. Um, for the three colour marker challenge, I'd picked out, uh, what do you call these? Butterfly pins. Can you see like through the back there? It might be difficult to see. It's but like the, the ones that you split. Yeah, yeah I've got these different coloured butterfly pens and uh, I thought it'd be fun to do a three marker colour challenge and have them as like a mixed media thing where I stick those in That's and really then cool. I do something based on like these colours. Yeah, yeah. But what I didn't foresee was that because these are 
so like 3D of an object, it was making it a nightmare to like draw anything in future sketchbook pages. So basically I came back and I had to try and carefully rip that out. That ripped this page, so then that's why I started sticking post-it notes over the top of it to cover up where I'd torn the paper. Oh, okay. I still think that's a great idea though, I love that. <laughs> a QT shawl that I got from my birthday from Leon. This is a mermaid with a really big butt. <laughs> mermaid Tito, she's got the cape. Looks like I cut out something to do with Amazon here. <laughs> I wonder if I was going to stick that in. It says, sorry that we missed you. This was on the back of some mail. It was Adam's sister. She's got really into like one of those wax seals that you can do like little fancy things no, on the back. Oh, it's very fancy. Yeah, I, like I feel it. like you'd be able to stick that in a sketchbook somewhere. That'd look cool. This is a letter from my friend Silva. I won't show that in case like she doesn't want it showing, but I doodled a chicken on the front of it because she reminds me of chickens. So. <laughs> Wow, what a compliment. <laughs> a little doodle from my friend Melissa. And she's drawn all the pouches at the bottom of it, which Aww. I really like. Oh, the scented markers. These were all Don't the scents sniff that, that oh, were available. <laughs> oh, my. oh, this is a really, really old one. So this was the back of a chocolate bar wrapper. Oh in America you'd call this Dove Chocolate, but we call it Galaxy. Oh yeah, that's it. And it was a bunch of ideas that I'd written on for like YouTube videos. Uh, this is way back on the channel and I couldn't bring myself to throw it out because a bunch of these we've actually... We've done that? Yeah, we actually ended up making. And then one other thing. And then this is like a really old piece of paper that I found. It might be difficult to see, but I was doodling a bunch of uh, sword shapes oh, wow. on this. This is back from when, uh, in one of like my much older sketchbooks, I was drawing a bunch of swords. And I think this was me getting a feel for like the shapes, the different of shapes. Them. yeah, because I've got like Viking and Katana and Semata. Yeah, I don't even know how to pronounce half of it. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for watching that. I know that was a really, really long sketchbook tour, but if, I appreciate you sitting through it. <laughs> if you made it to the end, you've got a comment down below, Steph's got the cake. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see more of my sketchbook videos, I'll link that in a playlist. And also, don't forget to check out the Red Bubble if you want to see a bunch of our stickers, because we've got so much new stuff over there. And until then, we'll see you next time for another Doodle Date. Doodle Date, bye-bye.